All right, we're back at Hammond's Fishing Center and it's the pre-spawn. But today we're talking about muddy water. The possibilities are endless of what you can put on a chatterbait. This is when this really shined. The pre-spawn is that transitional period between the winter where the bass spend their winter and the spawn. I'm going with the bright colors. I'm going with the chartreuses, the reds, and man, do they eat it. Today we're gonna to talk about what the tools are that I rely on the most, but for dirty water like stained and muddy water, that's like coleslaw, especially dirty water. Love this kind of fishing. Fish rely on their lateral lines more than they do their eyes. And uh, it's all about vibration and different sounds and um, just appealing to that sense of the bass. And uh, so today I'm gonna show you my top four lures and techniques. There's only gonna be one color in dirty water that I'm gonna reach for every single time. And it's on clearance right now too. Two bucks a pop. Gonna bring you along shopping. Hopefully we can get out of here for under four or 500 bucks. So come on. All right, guys, I'm gonna start off with the first one we're gonna talk about. Sturdy water, pre-spawn. I, I mean, the moment I tie this on is probably the pre-spawn, unless you're shallow water fishing in the winter, but this is a bait that you can throw year round if you got the right shallow water conditions, but. Look at that color. That's what we're going with. Fire crawl, orange blade, evergreen jackhammer. It's a dirty water special. I like the 3 8 ounce when I'm fishing that shallow, dirty, dirty, muddy water. Um, you know, it's uh, bait by Z-Man and Evergreen, the jackhammer, it's got a really stout hook. This is probably the most popular chatterbait going right now. Um, and there's a lot of good ones, you know, they still sell the originals for a reason. Um, there's modifications guys make on others that, that they like too. And they're constantly coming out with new ones and uh, you know, Strike King came out with a new one, and then, you know, we got Picasso here. Everybody got in the game, but this new one that I threw, and I mean, I caught the heck out of them in the fall and the summer up north on it, was this, yeah, the Slobber Knocker. Berkeley came out with a, a bait, you know, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, it's still, the blade's still on the head, and you gotta get around uh, the Z-Man patent Guys are always coming out with stuff, having to get tricky. It's because they can't just copy the Z-Man. But this one, the, what I found about this one is that when I needed to go at a higher speed, this is when this really shined. I mean, of course it would work at normal speeds, everything else that you would fish a jackhammer or any other chatterbait on. But when I wanted to really get it going fast and burning it and get them to trigger to that speed, this was good. Now we're obviously, we're talking about dirty water today. So I just gave you the fire crawl color and the jackhammer. And then my other favorite color is just honestly a white one. You know, guys like the chartreuse ones, guys like, you know, the black and blues and all that stuff. And man, I just really feel like that in the pre-spawn period, there's a lot of gizzard shad up shallow too. Um, and they will, they will eat a white chatterbait. Now you gotta have a trailer for these tra chatterbaits and there's a lot of popular ones, you know, the Yamamoto Zeko, Zeko, but there's two that I've been throwing the most. One of them, Berkeley designed it to go with the slobber knocker. So I'll, let's grab that one first. And then I'll show you the other one that has probably been my favorite for the last couple of years because it allows the baits to skip so well. And then the, the action, you can do so much with it. So right over here, we're talking about trailers. Now we got to put, put, put something on the, Put something on the end of our chatterbait and, the, and one of the trailers that i've been using the most here recently this new power stinger by berkeley power bait they got a four and a quarter and a three and a half you know i'm, I'm going white on white this is a pearl white power stinger four and a half in dirty water we're talking about pre-spawn muddy water dirty water conditions now i'm going for that bigger profile you know so i'm going to put the four four and a quarter on pairs really well you get the you just get a good flow they they obviously designed these two to go together and uh so i really like this one for when i'm going after that white profile now let's uh talk about the second trailer that i'm gonna go pair with the jackhammer so talk about my other favorite trailer obviously you know you guys there's there's a lot of other trailers 
I'm not necessarily always reaching for trailers that have a lot of movement first off. I'm going for that fluid motion with the more streamlined trailers, but there are instances where I will throw a crawl type trailer, you know, a bug style trailer, something with flappers. I mean, the the possibilities are endless of what you can put on a on a chatterbait, but these, I love these. They make a four and a half and a five and a half missile spunk shads. And I'm grabbing the five and a half because again, I'm going for that big, bigger profile. You can see how thick these things are. You know, it's kind of like your Kitek style swim bait bodies and then they just taper off into this skinny tail. And that tail just goes crazy. But another thing that this spunk shad allows you to do is just really skip a bait and provide some weight. So I can beef up my tackle, I can go to 20 pound test and I've got something that I feel like I'm in control of. My bait's not too light, especially when you're going down to your like three, three eight size. It's a little bit harder to control, but when I want the three eights in that shallower water, I'm always gonna reach for a three eights first this time of year. For the rest of the time of year, that's not the case, but for shallow, dirty water, I'm going lighter weight. And they, they made these colors to pair with some of the best chatterbait colors you know most popular chatterbait colors and obviously this lava crawl pairs perfectly with this bright huge orange nasty looking bait that on your muddiest water this is what i'm throwing the the nastiest stuff there's other things that work guys that white one will definitely work on some some days you know the the black and blues and the chartreuses and all that stuff but this is just what i reach for first so that's it for your your first category in the uh chatterbait or vibrating jig category as they would call it all right so you might notice a theme with this whole shallow dirty water pre-spawn uh topic and it's shallow <laughs> it's it's these fish they in the dirty water it just brings them up to live shallower the bait shallower they are shallower in dirty water and a lot of these baits we're picking out are better up in the shallow water column um, number two is the the shallow cranking and i just call it that shallow cranking there's a wide world of shallow crankbaits that you can choose from and a lot of them will work i'm going to share two of my favorites first off is on the early pre-spawn side of things when things are still in the 50s early you know low to mid 50s and it's a little bit colder i'm gonna have a fritz side tied on every day during the pre-spawn i'm gonna go with the normal fritz side five and berkeley just came out with a new clicking fritz side five which is uh pretty special here i'm pretty sure that we've got some but man I'm going with the bright colors. I'm going with the chartreuses, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, you know. Spring crawl is a good one. Um, your red crawls are gonna work. Your straight up chartreuse in black is gonna work in dirty water. You know, I'm, I'm looking for, are they keyed on on crawfish? Are they keyed on on, on bait fish, you know? I love the stuff that combines chartreuse and red. Like this is a new one. This is a new color by them. And I've already caught them pretty good on it. You can hear that clicking. So this is the clicking version that they made. You can hear that one knocker kind of sound in there. And man, did they eat it. Um, but you know, red, chartreuse, the shock colors are really gonna, really gonna work. You know, I don't, I don't throw a lot of the whites in dirty water um you know the shad colors when i'm cranking uh, you know i do that you know i told you i threw a white chatterbait but man i'm gonna reach for that chartreuse and black one first when they're on shad and then just you can't get a get you can't go wrong with any kind of red red carl version so that's the first of the two crankbaits that i'm going to share with you guys um is is the fret side five and both you know the silent silent version and the click version. I've got a box full of both. And there's oftentimes I'll have them both on the deck. And color is not usually, I'm not gonna have two silence or two clickings. I'm gonna have one of each. Cause that action and that subtle difference in the sound to me is more important to key in on before I figure out which color they on. So I might have a chartreuse one and a red one on, or I might have two red ones on with two different sounds. 
So, um, gotta have that title. All right, so the first shallow crankbait I talked about was the Fritz side, and that's more of a flat-sided crankbait. It's got a thinner vibration and makes that thinner vibration, and you know, and they've got the silent and the clicking now, so you got the sound. The next is just a square bill, and I throw a lot of different color, kind of square bills, a lot of different types. Um, you know, some that they got here in Hammonds is this, this Fat John 60. This is a really, really good bait. Um, I like this citrus shad on a sh shiny day sunny day rather um man that looks good look at that color um caught them caught them good on chartreuse and black and then uh the spring crawl you know is a is a classic but this is you know that square bill's got a wider body it's got a you know more wider wobble and different vibration you know and as you can hear and this one's silent a lot of them have a knocker in it and some have rattles in them and I'll cycle through but I'll say that my favorite during the pre-spawn is actually a silent one for a square bill I don't know why because I like the one knockers and crankbaits I like rattle traps sometimes and it, it's just crazy how you'll get tied to something but for whatever reason for me is I do better this time of year with the silent version of a square bill and it's so funny because on the same day i might have that clicking fritz side on the same deck but um this fat john especially this color this time of year is really good i like the crawl crawl patterns and then i like you know this chartreuse in black is good when it's muddy and uh sometimes when they're on shad really hard that citrus shad you see all a little bit of shiny stuff i don't really know if they can see it good or not but it still works um so yeah that's the second kind of category of shallow crankbaits that uh, that I use in dirty water in the pre-spawn. So you know I'm gonna have a chatterbait on the deck. You know I'm going to have a shallow crankbait or two on the deck. The third category that I will always have on the deck, no matter what, muddy water pre-spawn, dirty water pre-spawn, is a spinnerbait. Look at this whole aisle. Just real quick, just look at it. Spinnerbait, there are so many different colors and blade combinations because there's different types of spinnerbait blades and we'll touch on that just briefly. But in dirty water, I actually will use a lot, a lot of them, you know, in the stained, the cleaner side of the spectrum, you know, the one to two foot of, uh, of water clarity, clarity, I'll still throw these willows. Willows are these like longer shaped ones and I like a chartreuse in white, gold and a, gold and a silver blade. That just, that's the classic combo right there. For the first spinnerbait I'm gonna reach for is a, you know, double willow, you know, and then, then I'll start messing with the Colorado blades as it gets dirtier, because those, these willows provide vibration, but they don't provide as much vibration as a Colorado blade or an Indiana blade. An Indiana blade is like a, kind of cross between the two. So a Colorado blade, like, uh, let's show, show you right here. Those are those nighttime versions here. So right here, that's an Indiana blade. Ooh, I like that. That's a Colorado, so that's a Colorado blade. And they make big ones too, but they're more of the round inside. And then this is an Indiana blade. It's kind of more longer, but it's still cut. And that gives a lot of good vibration and thump. And honestly, right now, that orange kicker blade is a lot of muddy water specialist guys out in Oklahoma, probably threw it first. Um, you know, it's migrated here to the southeast and all over the country, anywhere you got muddy water. Anything with an orange kicker blade is, is solid, but uh, a spinnerbait can be homemade and by anybody. You can pick up, there's so many quality brands and I don't have like one, like I, you know, like my favorite Fritz side or whatever. You know, Berkeley spinnerbait's new and I've definitely thrown that some and I'm, I'm really enjoying the uh, durability of it so far. But man, you could go into a mom and pop shop and find a spinnerbait that nobody has a mainstream skew of and, you know, find a brand new spinnerbait. And this one, gosh, did that rattle? I think there might be a little rattle in that head. Well, maybe not, I don't know. Either way, see how sidetracked I can get in here? This is kind of what I'm looking for, man. Spinnerbaits, it's usually chartreuse and white. 
you can't go wrong. Chartreuse and white, just figure out what blade combos do they want. Do they want the willows? You know, if it's that stained greener water, definitely gonna throw willows a lot of times. And then as, dirt, as it gets dirtier, I'll switch to the uh, Indianas, the Colorados, and then uh, I'll brighten up that skirt. So when it gets super muddy, that's when, see, chartreuse and white now i just went to like chartreuse and orange and white they call that coleslaw a lot of times bass like coleslaw especially dirty water got the orange kicker blade and that's another i think indiana blade combination it's so hard for me to tell yeah i think that's an indiana blade um you know just this time last year pre-spawn last year i was up in kentucky and it was really kind of late winter early pre-spawn but those those pre-spawn big large mouths started coming up and it was really dirty some fresh mud was coming in and the fish didn't move and they, they had a spinnerbait really well in that experience so i'm gonna have some version of a spinnerbait tied on in the pre-spawn when it's dirty all right, so that double willow one that I'm throwing has a kind of a trailer built into the skirt. And when, when it's not as dirty, I'm fine with that. I don't necessarily need to grab a trailer. Um, you can do the split tail style trailers if you want to. That's just there. I, I do like a trailer, especially in dirty water. Um, on the uh, muddy, muddy water thumper ones like the, the Colorado Indiana blade ones. And uh, let me go ahead and show you the one trailer that I'm going to that I'm gonna put on it. And it's going to be a swim bait. Right here. And I like chartreuse, I want chartreuse in it. It's dirty, I'm going with chartreuse and white skirts, chartreuse and orange stuff. So I'm gonna come and grab a swim bait. And I just like a swim bait, it's got a little paddle tail. And honestly, I'm not sure if the trailer really matters on a spinnerbait. The, the blades are your, gonna be your key action. You're gonna be your key vibration. You know, the theory behind this that I've learned is that it gives the spinnerbait suction power. So if a bass comes and hits it in dirty water, it's not using its eyesight. It's trying to hone in on the vibration. So a lot of times your bites, they'll open their mouth and try to suck it in. They're not seeing it. They're not slashing at it a lot of times and if they hone in on your blades or if there's nothing like solid with that soft plastic, it just gives the bait a little bit more weight. So when the bass comes up and its mouth is like a vacuum on that spinner bait in that dirty water, this is around the hook. So it's gonna get it and suck it right in and your hook's gonna be, it's just gonna give you a higher, you know, hook up rate on your spinner bait when you're fishing this really dirty water. So. Definitely like a paddle tail swim bait. This is a little dipper from Reaction Innovations. Um, you know, it's just the first one I saw that had chartreuse and that's what I want. I just want a chartreuse swim bait on my spinner baits and uh, you don't have to get too wild with it. All right, the last technique. So let's go to the next aisle, I'll show you. It's gonna be a jig. There's only gonna be one color in dirty water that I'm gonna reach for every single time, black and blue. And it's gonna be a flipping style jig. I'm gonna try to find one here. You know, there's, there's football jigs, there's grass style jigs and swim jigs that are more streamlined. What I'm gonna be doing in, a lot of times is just flipping and pitching. So I like a horizontal line tie jig with a really stout flipping hook because I'm gonna beef up and I mean, you're flipping and pitching, you're gonna lay, the, lay it to them. Um, and, uh, and I just think that horizontal line tie for this, I, I use both styles. I'm, you know, we'll, we'll get into all the other kinds of jigs sometime, I'm sure, but right here, this skipping jig right here, you can tell it's got a really good hook, really stout hook. It's got this wider head, so it's going to come through wood and stumps and, you know, kind of everything pretty good. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tie it on a big rod and big line. It's got a five-aught hook in it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a trailer with it. I think I think I can find I think I saw some on the clearance aisle actually that I got to rack up on um, but that's it man I, I don't get crazy with colors in dirty water black and blue is the mainstay if they're not on black and blue they're probably not eating a jig in dirty water so you got to have a trailer on your jig and in dirty water I'm gonna go with something that's gonna give you a little movement um, come on over here I think I saw some of what I like over here and it's on clearance right now too. 
trigger cross. They just got this flap in action. And I like a black with a blue glitter to put on there. And I also, if it's super, super dirty, I'll go with this bright blue. A lot of times it's called flipping blue or I think this one's called Labatt. And that's a, uh, here's one too. This is a four inch. I like that bigger four inch. This is a three inch. And I'll use a three inch too, but these four inch ones, they just got bigger flappers. I think I can open this and show you right there. So I'm gonna pair that. I'm gonna thread it onto that jig and that's gonna stick out the back and these do a really good job of flapping, giving you enough vibration, help them finding it, help them find it. And then, you know, I'll go with that blue and that really super dirty water again. And then like a black with a blue glitter and the stained to, I mean, that's gonna work in muddy water too. Um, so that's it. All right, I just raided the closeout sale on those chigger cross, two bucks a pop. And uh, guys, I can't say enough, you know, the, when the water gets dirty around the pre-spawn period is when I love to fish. You know, you're appealing to that lateral line. You're trying to make vibrations, you know, since color's less important, but I do think you need those shock colors at times. And, you know, we went through the, my top four that I will always have on the deck. I will have a chatterbait. I'm going to have a shallow crankbait, pro probably two different styles, the square bill and the flat side. I'm going to have some kind of version of a spinnerbait and then the black and blue jig all times that during the obviously there's going to be other things that i might try but i can guarantee if there's 15 rods on my deck those four techniques are going to be covered you know and it could be eight rods worth but they're going to be covered this time of year um guys if you got any questions leave them in the comments below we'd love to chat with you guys answer any questions you have and if you haven't yet please subscribe to the channel give us a like and a follow and uh I've got more shopping to do.